crossing your ears part two. I guess that that is today's video. Are you ready? Let's go do it right now. <music> Go check it out, I'm Analog Kitchen and thank you for checking out yet another video. Now, if this is your first time here, do not hesitate to click subscribe and hit that notification bell. Because whenever I upload a new video, you'll be kept in the loop and, and you'll not miss out on anything. Hang out till the end of this video, I'll tell you all about Discord, Patreon, the connection. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Now, trusting your ears. Your hearing is very funny because whenever you're tired, whenever you've rested, whenever you're hyper, it seems as if sound does something different to you. I play out on Friday nights and then by the time it's Sunday and I've done three, four gigs, for some reason, the Sunday gig feels as if the, as if the music is faster or it's a little bit, you know, because I'm more uh, exhausted throughout that uh, grueling weekend maybe. So I opted to search for um, ways to trust my ears more or at least trust your ears maybe I should state it in a way like how to interpret the sound that I'm hearing because wouldn't it be cool to just like have some sort of a stable sort of like insight on what sound is what it does um, if you're hauling around all your equipment if you have to um, set it up and break down and go to a different gig sometimes it's, it's a grueling process so you have to understand that sounds may change but the crowd on the floor they don't really you know they don't care they want you to just do the performance and do your utmost so that's the thing that you need to do now this is part two of the series if you didn't watch part one i said Just you should check that out now. You thought the camera froze in you. <laughs> Go check out the video if you did not do so already and then come back to this one because this one is going to be a continuation of the flavor. So we've made some beats last week. We introduced a little bit of a sound. Today we're going to take stuff a little bit further. I can go way into the uh, matter of things. I suggest you and your pals, if you're watching this, uh, crank up the volume, do listen on great headphones. Um, the Olos might be a good suggestion, by the way. Oops, shameless plug. Um, or have some decent speakers in the studio and go and listen to them as well. I'm going to just like play the sound loud and take you into my way of trusting your ears. Are you ready? Let's go do it. So last week we were almost getting into the vibe with that rave sound. So let's take it uh, from there, shall we? Still going to play my beats. Just a kick. Um, quickly going over, if you uh, missed last week's video, I just uh, explained on how the drums were working. Um, you have to trust your ears, focus on what it is that you would like to hear, get a mental sort of like imprint first, and then work your way up to that. It's a bit of a trick to how, how to work it, but it, will, it should be sweet. Okay, check it out, right? What we are going to do is uh, add more drums. We've got an old school kind of rave beat that I've created. Um, if you didn't watch uh, last week's video, go and check it out first because this is going to be a continuation of uh, yeah of uh, what I did last week. So, okay, quickly going over what what um, to recap: kick, loop, snare drum, hidden away, close hat, open hat, snare, one with reverb, the other one not. So. And a right symbol, right? And then I've got here, I have got a rave sound. There you go. One, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, one, two. With the head. Now I've got a filter here. If you just want to make a rave sound, then this is the, the, the then you're already there. You know, your drums are working. I'm on 130 BPM, by the way, 128 even, 128. Now, this is, let's check it out, um, my third pattern set, which means that I've got accompanying sounds coming from the subsequent 37 <coughs> and the mini tar. Now, on my multi-clock, this is a little train that I have, right? So, the APC-1 collects the MIDI, the um, the uh, octa is doing the drums 
and it's in turn the octa is sending out MIDI to the black box and the black box is doing uh, different things. So I can easily switch through different parts of my performance because I've got all these different um, performances lined up right here already. And then I'll just play it from there and just like add music underneath at a later point. So I'll go to the next sequence page, which is a very important page. And what I have done is, let's turn off the rave. There you go. So turn off the rave, turn off the loop, turn off the hat. Just like keep it nice and tidy so that I'm not getting distracted. Now what I have done is, you have to make sure that everything starts on the same sort of like measure. Bam! You can see a little bar here. Bam! Starting. And then here, boom. So that's very important if you're starting to make music. I have um, arranged for the MPC-1 to do things twofold. There's uh, either on 3A, because here is also 3. So that's what I have done. The pattern set is pattern set number 3. Then obviously I'm going to go here to row number 3. One row is one song, which means that, and I'm using two sequences or patterns for one track. A being the ostinato one most of the time, which means that now there's already a bass line playing that accompanies that rave sound. I know for a fact that if we're going to open up, you can hear that this does the same thing as that. So with my drums, it sounds like. Now let's look closely to this bass line. I'm using the mini tar because the mini tar um, gets me to a place pretty fast. What I do not want to do and what I do not want to have happen is, oh, I'm standing uh, performing and all of a sudden it goes AWOL, right? It happens. So what you would want to do is have a sound with preferably multiple oscillators. This one's got two. The waveforms that you can alter. So this thing goes between a square wave and a saw wave, right? Or triangle wave, I should say. And then uh, you can just alter the pitch. So this is instantly some sort of a Reese kind of vibe, right? If I'm going to extend the... like this machine so instantly I can do whatever I want yeah with it I can just create sounds on the fly well sounds on the fly I think it's a very rudimentary way of making music right okay what I would need is now the kick is completely swamped in low end and everything is loud I would just go in don't mind the, the crackling knob and I'm going to just like first because I've got my levels here for the two later now nothing plays let's listen to vco1 right and a vco2 is the one that i can pitch let's mellow it out a little bit by using the square and then enter that first one as well Lowering this a little bit. There you go, okay. I want, need a little bit of that bass sound, right? Now what I would want for my bass line, because the rave sound is where the adrenaline is gonna come from, um, I just need this to sit underneath that ravey sound because the rave sound is mids and highs mainly because that's where the loudness and the adrenaline and the sheer craziness in your face is going to be. Listen to this. And when I lower the filter, this is going to sit neatly on top of the mini tower. The mini tower is a bit of a blanket underneath. I'm even going to take out a little bit of attack. I take the envelope generation out a little bit. 
because that's going to make it very percussive. Listen. What you would want is to have the adrenaline come from this sound, right? Kick out, listen to this. Did you see what I just did? I know that this filter does two things, so I can open it up and then quickly just hit that hi-hat. So again, I trust that my drums are wicked, right? Stuff will change. Your brain will say after a while, are you crazy? Change it. Don't you hear that there's a lot of low? Or don't you know that there's too much high? Leave it where it is. It was cool half an hour ago. It should be sweet right now. So, okay. So what you would do is that's two sounds that are working together already, right? Let's just leave the race sound for where it is right now. The trick to do also is to, since this is a nice, round, pleasing and soothing kind of deep bass sound, this is something you do not want to throw out there uh, lightly. You just don't want to come out guns blazing with that. Because from the minute you stick it on a subwoofer, you cannot take it back. So what I would do is I'll probably uh, build up the sound, some, something like this, and hint with this. Instantly people know, oh yeah, that's that retro kind of 90s vibe. Okay, stick that drum loop there. Then everything's complete. Now boom, we're 90, it's 94, right? Take out your, whist your whistles and your glow sticks and uh, that's a ball. So that's how I'm approaching this, right? I get him to tap, ba da ba da ba ba do do tap, ba da ba do da Okay, slowly, now I'm going to open up this filter. And on last week's video, I told you that a trick that I do is add multiple uh, frequencies in the opposite direction. So I'll add the right symbol and the bass line. Check out what, what happens. So more low end will come in, but more high end will come in as well. So what happens is the frequency spectrum now all of a sudden opens up and starts to become uh, a little bit more, yeah, party time, as I would say. So this is the climax of the track, right? Cool. Now, I told you on my MPC-1 that I have different patterns playing. I don't know what I have uh, uh, performed on the second one. Let's see what is happening. Bam. And then there's another sound, probably. I know that something is playing, I just, I'm not hearing it because it's fine. I hear it. I can see that the subsequent is playing, but I don't hear it right now. I don't. why that's happening because another sound that we can actually um, work. This is very intelligent, no, but you know now that there are different patterns that you can use. Take out the kick, like so. Lower the sound. Open up the filter. Okay. And go back to my different two, three, go. Now that's a way of working uh, the sounds that you can actually just trust. Now, 
the, 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 the problem is that you are working with different sort of levels constantly. Um, when I go in, the filters are low and the kick is and it's doing its stuff. So I know for a fact that my drums are already working. I'm going to take out my bass lines right here. So if I'm playing my drums, I know that this works and this works on a loud sound. So believe me, I've done it. It's really cool. If I want to set something up differently, um, I'll just play something else, right? Because I've got the AS1 sitting right here. That just plays a sequence on its own. So that's sitting right here. It's already playing. That's on my first and second channel. So there's another sequence that I can play, that I can play around with. So certain things are being recorded into the Akai MPC. Uh, and play MIDI, so they're just going to repeat the MIDI notes. All the stuff you just want to fire up on its own, so that if you want to think like, oh, I'm not sure if I'm still in the right sort of like beat, in the right grid, uh, it's just running like on two, three, four, and this is on one, two, three, then okay, what should I do? So I can turn stuff off easily. Now it's even easier to just go in and say like, nice, let's go and try a different pattern. Maybe something with a breakbeat. I play something like this. So you can imagine that I've set this up to just do different things, different tasks constantly. Now, this is a thing easy. And I love the AS1 because you can hide this stuff in the background. The filters are pretty cool. Thank you, Dave Smith. Really, really cool filters, um, which means that you can just come out of the darkness. That's how I use it most of the time. So. Let's say we're going to go with this drum beat that we have. We're going to go. There's a bit of delay that I need to introduce on the multi-clock. Because this one was a bit quick. Open the filter up. Shorten the uh, decay. Again, snare drums on three. Now, what I have done is that... And I set it so that those two are playing together in the same key. So now I'm away from the subsequent and from the mini tower. But this is a completely different interpretation of what I can hear and what I can do. Now, you know that 303 sound, it works well with that old school rave kind of vibe. So let's go back to our pattern that we had, the one with the drum beat, which is on pattern number three, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Definitely. Obviously then I'll turn uh, off the uh, mini tower so that I can do something else. This is what happens in the transition sort of like phase of things. I'll just take stuff out, add stuff to it, take stuff out, add stuff to it, take stuff out. So now I'm on my little trancy bancy little bender. So I'm going to add uh, the drums that we initially played in the beginning. See what that is going to give. Funny enough, you can hear that, now you hear the AS1, you can clearly hear that TBO3. But from the minute I'm going to introduce the drums, this goes to the back burner, the AS1. However though, instead of just thinking, oh, let's just give the volume knob a whiz, it's best if you can just like, see if you can work the filter in that certain sounds, certain transients are going to start to pop up again. So we're going to enter, enter our drums. We're not going to alter the drums. We're not going to turn anything down. We know the drums are cool, so we're going to run with them, right? So, okay. Drums. Probably lower the filter a little bit on the TBO3. Hide a little bit in the drums. There you go.
in the meantime, you can see like, okay, this is now running. I can easily go into the black box that's just playing in the background, but I mean, nothing's being, being fired up. I can just like find a different track and say like, okay, let's go to track number maybe two. I'm not sure what two is, but I'm gonna load in two. Two is there. Nice, okay. Okay, so slowly taking this one out. That's why I'll do it. Because I know that this, this is a theme, it's music information. Music information is always going to take your brain into a certain expectation. And when it's ostinato or mono, I can just like lower the filter and hide it in the drums, right? So even if there's a conflicting uh, chord scheme that is playing, this is probably not going to hurt as much. Okay, what I'm going to do is play another sample. Now it's triggered well. Usually I'm not stopping and starting, obviously it just does the trick all the time, but that can happen sometimes. Right, so I'm going to take this bass line out, switch to that rave sound. There you go, two, three, four, one, 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 one. There you go. Okay, so if this was the next sort of like segment, again, filter, because I'd like to just like build anticipation and come out of the darkness and just do it that way, right? That's how we would like to work this stuff out. Okay. Again, listen to the closed head. But everything has a place, everything has a song and dance on how you would like to work this out, right? This goes here, that goes there, such goes such. That's how you should just uh, uh, need to um, uh, work it in your brain. There's a frequency window and just build stuff up from the bottom up. Now, um, I hope that this is helpful to you. Let me know in the comment section if that's something that you can get into. This is uh, my means of uh, working it. Um, it's the first time that I've done a two like a two video sort of like one a, a, a bigger video uh, or a, a topic switched into two things that's what i would like i would want to say so um yeah thanks for watching and enjoy uh, the ride so i guess that's that that's the way we are uh, looking at things at least that's the way how i do it let me know in the comment section below how you work that out very very keen to see and hear whether that is something that's going to work for you see those videos see these videos as a go-to sort of like thing because the more you uh, get advanced at this the more you will hear but sometimes you have to come back to these videos and, and use them as some evergreen videos that will always help you enhance your hearing because um, i do think that that was the way it worked for me so okay um like I said on last week's video as well, it's as if you're training yourself to see more pixels in the picture, perhaps the resolution gets enhanced the more you hear. So it's a playing field that gets bigger and with a bigger playing field, there's more uh, perspective on what you can do, yes or no, but you would like to get to one point first. So that's why those pointers and those insights can be of uh, some help. I think they're important, so check that out. Thank you for watching. If you made it this far into the video, you are an absolute superstar. That's what I said. So, um, Patreon, that's where we get together because there's much more to say and think about whatever I just laid out. I give a suggestion, we all ramble on about it, so that's what we do in the video chats after the video, mostly. So do and check it out. Oh, there's a catch. You have to just like be enlisted on Patreon to do so. So Patreon is connected to Discord, and on Discord we talk gas, synths, sounds, sound design, travel, flight casing, modular stuff. We talk a lot of stuff. I mean, it's cool. Circles out there, routers out there, Brian's out there. We've got um, a Travarsis out there, so we've got like a cool, great community of cool people that are actually hanging out. Lemmy's out there, um, um, John's out there, uh, Rod is out there, uh, Master D's out there. I mean, there's so many cool patrons that make it worth, I can't forget uh, my man um, um, uh, Doming's out there uh, as well. Um, we've got Qubit All-Stars out there. 
Um, I can just name all the patrons that are there. They're mostly there. Uh, Slim Pickens was out there. I didn't see him for a while, but he's out there. So the Patreon community is a cool community of like-minded people. Danny and Al, um, Dalsin's out there. Um, yeah, so you can see we've got this like cool community and we're all talking shop. Now, if you want to join us, come and join us. It's cool, you know. Um, it's really helped me to uh, think out of the box pun intended, to think on what I can do, what my music can be, uh, and it's always cool to just like, you know, throw it out there. Uh, most important, you can throw your demos in there, so if you make music, make music with me, make music with everyone else, it's just a cool, growing community. Have I sold it? Well, I think I did. Now, thank you for watching, I guess that that is that. You will catch me next week, where? On another video. And by the way, if it's not seven semitones up, it's not worth watching or listening to it. Gotcha. See you guys on the rebound. I'm Anilo Kitchen and I'm out. Peace.